Mrs. Crawley. We weren't expecting you. Her ladyship is lunching with Lady Ingram, his lordship is walking, Lady Mary is at the Dower House, and Lady Edith is in London. As a matter of fact, it's you I came to see, to talk about Charles Grigg. You know he's got a job at the Opera House in Belfast. He's so anxious to talk to you before he goes. Then he is in for a disappointment. He says he's resolved to put his dishonesty behind him. Is he now? I know it's more than that. He told me he'd caused you great unhappiness, but he said it was not his fault. He was always a liar. I see. It seems a pity not to take the chance to end a quarrel. Isn't it better than to let things fester? I don't mean to speak out of turn, Mrs. Crawley, but you will, I think, accept that any difference between Mr. Grigg and me is my concern. Of course it is. I'm sorry. They've arrived, so we should go down as soon as Mary gets here. Have you told her about Mr. Mason? I have. How'd she take it? She's annoyed, but it seems London went well, so she's less cross than she might be. It's good of you to come tonight, Isabel. We couldn't miss Carson's return. And Mrs. Carson, of course. <laughs> I can't get my tongue round it. <laughs> We've simply got to learn. We ought to go down. I could hear them shouting from my bedroom. I haven't been into the kitchens for oh, at least 20 years. <laughs> Have you got your passport? I thought I'd come up early and spend some time with George. I told Nanny I'd feed him, but now you can do it. He'd like that. Oh, I doubt it. He probably thinks, who's this funny old lady? But never mind. By the way, I thought I'd be Grandmama, and then Cora can be Granny. And what about Sibby? What should she call you? Well, Aunt Isabel, I think. I'm not quite a real aunt, but I nearly am. <laughs> Did I read somewhere that your friend Lord Gillingham is engaged to be married? Yes, to Miss Lane Fox. I hope you don't mind. I should so hate for you to be unhappy. I'm not unhappy. I'm just not quite ready to be happy. When I got engaged, I was so in love with Reginald, I felt sick. I was sick with love, literally. <laughs> it seems so odd to think about it now, it really does. It was the same for me. As if I'd gone mad or been hypnotized or something. For days, weeks, all I could think about was her. And me. I was standing outside in the snow, and I didn't have a coat, but I wasn't cold, because all I kept thinking was, he's going to propose. He's going to propose. Well, aren't we the lucky ones? Oh, look who's here. Hello. Hello. Like tea? Mm. Why do we have to help ourselves at luncheon? Yes. It's a Downton tradition. They have their feast at lunchtime and we have ours in the evening. But why can't they have their lunch early and then serve us, like they normally do? Because it's Christmas Day. It's not how we'll do it at Haxby. Which I can easily believe. <laughs> oh, this is nice. This is... what is it? What does it look like? Something for getting stones out of horses' hooves? It's a nutcracker. We thought you'd like it. Good. To crack your nuts. What's he doing? Oh, he just came to see me off. Mm. But we mustn't lose any time or we'll miss our train. Yeah, I know I'm late. It couldn't be helped. Cora insisted I come without a maid. I can't believe she understood the implications. Which are? Well, how do I get a guard to take my luggage? And when we arrive in London, what happens then? Fear not. I've never travelled with a maid. You can share my knowledge of the jungle. Can't you even offer help without sounding like a trumpeter on the peak of the moral high ground? And must you always sound like the sister of Marie Antoinette? 
What time do you leave in the morning? I thought I'd get the ten o'clock. I'm meeting him for tea. You're not encouraging this. She hasn't agreed anything yet. Ugh, Mama, talk to her. Talk to all of them. Say something sensible. Yes, let's hear how a woman's place is in the home. I do think a woman's place is eventually in the home. But I see no harm in her having some fun before she gets there. Oh, Granny, thank you. Have you changed your pills? I'm impressed you should come to say goodbye, Mama. Why do you always talk of me as if I were a salmon who laid my eggs in the gravel and then swam back to the sea? <laughs> You're very maternal, aren't you, Granny? <laughs> if it suits you. When does Princess Kuragin turn up? Tomorrow. What about the prince? He'll be coming to dinner that night. Will you be there? Would I miss it? I can't tell you how sorry I am that we will. Get aboard before I get cross with you. <laughs> It's all in your hands, Carson. May they prove worthy of the charge, my lord. Uh, lord Sindhubi, Ransom and Barrow. Not what I call a recipe for a peaceful week's shooting. Makes you wonder what they'll be shooting at by the end of it. <laughs>